As some of you may know, I am a die-hard Cincinnati Bengals fan, and I have been since I was a kid. And yes, before you even ask, I did see the Bengals-Steelers playoff game from January 9th. And what are my thoughts? Well, when I was watching the game, it was probably something like... That dirty Perkish hark a back flat and fought and fill a bucket Martin, Perkaluma Burton! Ugh. It definitely was a really tough game to watch. And not just because I'm a Bengals fan, it was a tough game to watch as a sports fan. That game on January 9th was embarrassing, and frankly, it was embarrassing for all sports. In a heated rivalry between two hated teams, and I mean hated, the Cincinnati Bengals saw their playoff hopes dashed yet again, but this time in a way that no one wanted to see. There have been great sports rivalries over the decades. From Yankees Red Sox to Michigan Ohio State to Red Wings Avalanche. And they've all gotten out of control at one time or another. But the January 9th Bengals Steelers playoff game, that was a rivalry that got out of control on an unprecedented level. I'm talking failure on all sides. No one came out clean on this one. For the Bengals and the Steelers, both teams should be absolutely ashamed at their behavior. Countless cheap shots and provocation from both sides as, as both teams let themselves be overcome with rage and anger. And the NFL? Well, they sent in the same exact officiating crew that couldn't handle the Bengals and the Steelers the last time they played, thinking maybe that the playoff game would be far less tumultuous. <laughs> Seriously? And I didn't think this was even possible, but somehow they found a way to do even less to prevent the horrific antics on the field. And we all watched as the worst of people was on display. In prime time. And as I sat there, incredibly disappointed, two things came to mind. First, this is what happens when rage and anger go unchecked. Proverbs 29 11 tells us a fool gives full vent to his spirit but a wise man quietly holds it back. That game was full of fools. See, here's the thing I hope they learn. Anger is of no benefit, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Anger has this way of kind of like taking us over and leading us to all sorts of sin. And that game was a perfect example of what that looks like. And after I watched the post-game reports with interviews of players and coaches and then read articles after the game, a second thought occurred to me. See, this, this anger and rage and judgment that they carry with them goes far beyond the football field. It seems that this has become a, a bit of a way of life for them. And, and I know that because in all the reports and interviews afterward, very few of them, if any of them, accepted the blame for their own actions. It was always someone else's fault. No one wanted to accept responsibility for their own sin. And as a result, it unfortunately appears that this kind of behavior will likely continue. See, I'm fearful. I'm fearful that we as a society have become far too comfortable with anger. See, it seems to me that so much of the, the issues and topics today are inundated with aggression rather than conversation that leads to some sense of positive change or reconciliation. And maybe that's why some people are so taken with and drawn to the story of this game. Maybe what happened that night triggered something in us, like an accident we can't look away from. That as horrible as this was, it wasn't unexpected. And maybe that's the real horror. Do you think that society has become far too comfortable with anger? Do you think that anger is even a problem? Let us know in the comments down below or on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the hashtag ForthrightTV. I'm Anthony Creeden, and I'm just trying to be forthright. Yeah, see, to me, there's a, a huge difference between like being competitive in this like will to win at all costs, right? Like, like being competitive is all about, you know, you, you put in the work, right? You put in the effort trying to succeed. There's nothing wrong with that. But like this win at all costs is, is almost a value placement, right? Like if, if I lose, I'm somehow devalued in some way. And that's, that's the sad part. 
And it's even sadder that you're seeing it in all kinds of sports. Like people just get really aggressive about it. I almost think if you like put 20 old ladies in a room and at a competitive knitting contest, you'd have an issue. Uh, you'd have to like have a referee in there. And the old ladies would grab her sewing needles and like whip it at the other. Crazy stuff. Although you'd have to admit that Ethel deserved it. She's been asking for it. 